Dr. Zahi is director of the Natalios ART Center Orion France, COFRAC technical auditor in ISO for ART and Andrology Laboratories. His main interest is influence on of environment on IVF outcomes, time lapse, and quality management. So, uh, Dr. Xavier, uh, you are going to speak uh, about simplifying semen processing before exit. Uh, yes. The stage is yours now. Okay, um, I'm trying to, okay, perfect. I'm sharing my screen, can you see it? Yes, perfect, you can start. Perfect, so I, I'm going to, uh, to keep it short and simple um, before I know you get the exam after. So um, simplifying stream and processing before ICSI. So we all know uh, this, uh, this scheme, this is the classical sperm preparation by density gradient centrifugation. This is the most used technique in the world in uh, IVF centers, but it has drawbacks. The technical time is high, it's approximately uh, 45 minutes. And there is always a treatment of multiple samples in parallel. And then there is a risk of mismatch that we all know and we all fear. And there are also multiple identity checkpoints that need to be double witnessed most of the time. So there is a cost in, in terms of time and also for st stress for the embryologist. But there may also be an impact on the quality of the spermatozoa. This technique has been improved over the years by post-washing additional selections, just, just like SwimUp, Pixie, Max, HOS, Biorefringence, you name it. You have a lot of techniques that have, that have been described with some um, different results. So what is the impact of density gradient certification on the spermatozoa? There is a very recent and very nice study by, by Dr. Rad, who is in Lebanon, and uh, he described that uh, centrifugation, um, whether it is with density gradient or density gradient with swim up after density gradient, or centrifugation before swim up, well, it, uh, it, it, um, it can damage the spermatozoa. It, it um, elevates the, the level of ROS in the sperm that is generated by the, 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 the spermatozoa. Uh, it also um, triggers um, a premature acrosome reaction. And there is also an elevation of the sperm DNA fragmentation. So if you don't do, don't do the centrifugation, you have very low level of centrifugation. This is here, the simple swim up method here. So how can we simplify uh, things uh, from now because we know that centrifugation may be detrimental to the spermatozoa. Well, there is a very nice RCT from an Italian team, which is quite recent, that shows that you can do an horizontal swim up directly in the ICSI dish. So you just have to put 50 microliter drops, 350 microliter drops of sperm media here. You put the sperm here. Can you see the, the arrow? Yes? Yes. Okay, so you put the, the, the sperm, the raw semen here, and you just let the motile spermatozoa migrate through the drops, and you harvest the spermatozoa here, and you inject, okay? Well, this uh, RCT uh, showed that when you did that, you had an improvement in cleavage rate and blastocyst rates. Implantation rates were not improved, nor clinical pregnancy rates. And <clears throat> this technique has been uh, also used by another group, uh, the group from uh, Fatimi and Barry, and they use quite the same technique uh, with one drop when they would, where they put the semen and one drop where they harvest the sperm. So, but they described an interesting phenomenon that uh, takes place when you do that. There is a fluid movement from the drop without raw semen to the drop with raw semen. And so, and there is also, uh, so the motile spermatozoa have to uh, go against the flow. And this phenomenon is known as rear taxis, okay? And then they use the spermatozoa that were able to go against the flow, getting out of the, the raw semen, go against the flow. And they use it for ICSI. And they showed that they have more high quality embryos, just like the Italian team. But they also showed that they had more implantation rate and clinical pregnancy rate. But I insist, uh, for you to look at the, the results they have. 
first of all, there are not many patients. This is the drawback of many studies on, this, on the subject. And it's quite like they have a magical control group here. Implantation rates are very low in the group two, okay, the one um, with conventional methods, and quite high when you, you look at the group one, the one with um, real taxis selection. Okay, so what we can say from, from this study is that it improves um, the, um, it can improve the um, embryo quality and maybe sometimes the, the clinical pregnancy rate, the clinical outcomes. So what can we do uh, to avoid centrifugation? We could also use what nature put there for us to use. Okay, for example, we could use the, the cumulus uh, or the cervical mu mucus for sperm selection. And we can do it in an ICSI dish. So uh, the first study that I want to present was a study about using cervical mucus. It was only a descriptive study that showed that the spermatozoa that are able to pass through cervical mucus are better condensed and most importantly, have practically no DNA fragmentation. You can see it here, it's sneak translation, it's the equivalent of tunnel. But there are drawbacks by using cervical mucus that I will present after. Another study focused on um, um, the quality of spermatozoa that would be filtered through uh, cumulus complex chunks, okay? So basically you put this raw semen here or um, treated semen here, you put the chunks of com uh, cumulus complexes here and the spermatozoa that will pass through will be harvested here, okay? And the, um, in the control group, you don't have any cumulus, so it's, it's only motility. And you can see that there is an improvement in, uh, in motility pa parameter, especially uh, velocity and uh, ALH, but also in the normal form and the DNA fragmentation incidence in the spermatozoa. So it seems that going through the, the cumulus complex it is improving spermatozoa quality. But what about clinical results? Well, um, I will present the dish after. So, there is this study from 2018 from a Chinese group that showed that when they did that, when they used the COC selected spermatozoa for ICSI, they had a, a better uh, utilization rate uh, for oocyte, better embryo quality, but they didn't notice um, any improvement in the clinical pregnancy rate or cum cumulative pregnancy rates. I mean, no significant improvement, but if you look at the numbers, you see that there is a tendency to uh, clinical improvement, okay? Here is the dish that I use in my lab. This is quite, um, this is quite a mix between uh, the techniques I presented. The raw semen is put it here in a spermidium drop, okay? I do another spermidium drop here without semen, of course, and a bridge between these two drops. And I put the uh, cumulus complex just right here. So the spermatozoa have to pass through, um, have to pass through the cumulus. And then I harvest the spermatozoa that has been that have been selected here and use it for X. It's directly without centrifugation, it's direct selection in the culture dish. So what are the drawbacks of using female partner material? Well, first of all, the quality is uh, is variable because every patient is not the same. So the mucus could not be good. The cumulus sometimes are, are quite awful. You can see that when you, you, when you harvest the, the cumulus during the OPU. So there is a lack of reproducibility. And there is also, especially for cervical mucus, a potential infectious risk and also a risk of con contamination. Well, when you use the cervical mucus, you don't know what happened with the woman seven days before. And you know that spermatozoa can survive in the cervical mucus in the in the genital tracts a long time. So I, I wouldn't advise using cervical mucus, but it's not the same for cumulus because I mean, cumulus, we use it every time. We use cumulus selection every time in classical IVF. So I don't think there is a risk at using cumulus in, in, a, in, in an IVF setting, but there is a risk of partial selection because the spermatozoa could just go uh, on the walls of the media and not go through the cumulus. Well, the, the last drawback is, is it, it is adding supplementary steps. For example, if you want oh. to use cumulus selection, you have to trim your oocyte. You have to oh, trim your oocyte before oh, using it. So long, so le... Nouredin, we can hear you. <laughs> um, but I mean, if you do it 
in your lab every day, the trimming. This is not a supplementary step that is uh, difficult to, uh, to overcome. So sh very shortly, because we don't have time, I want to uh, take a glimpse at new microfluidic devices. So, you know, the promise of microfluidic is that without centrifugation and uh, using flow, for example, uh, and um, channels, you can select viable sperm, viable motile sperm, and, uh, and use it for ICSI or IVF. What I wanted to present to you is this new study about uh, a real taxis based sperm, sper sperm separation, which uses a biomimicry microfluidic device. It's a really new study. It's been published, uh, I think, one month ago. And this is very interesting. This is a microfluidic device. So there is an active flow, OK? And the sperm spermatozoa, the raw semen is put here. And then the spermatozoa will migrate, motile or dead. They will migrate in the flow. But the really good spermatozoa, the motile one, at some, at some places in the microfluidic chips where the flow is less, uh, has less velocity, they will orient against the flow and with the motility will be uh, concentrated in small uh, cavities just right here. So if you have no flow, all the spermatozoa are going there. If you add the flow, there will be a selection zone, which they call the rear taxis zone here, where the spermatozoa will orient against the flow and the most motile one would be able to, um, to concentrate in the cavities. And you can see here the tracks of uh, the, the motile spermatozoa that are going against the flow and then pushing in the cavity. So rear taxis uh, is implicated in really a lot, a lot of um, of sperm selection technique that use flow or that use the motility of spermatozoa as a prime selection method. So there is another um, microfluidic, I don't know if you can say microfluidic, but um, let's say it, um, a microfluidic uh, technique that is called the zymot or the fertile ultimate or fertile plus uh, depending on the countries. And it can use um, channels where the spermatozoa can migrate. It's only migration. And when you look at the, the results that have been um, displayed in RCTs, well, you get, just like we found uh, already, a better quality of the embryos. But the clinical uh, outcomes are not always good and not always better than the, the classical selections. I want to present the other, um, the other uh, microfluidic device that is uh, sold um, as the Zymod selection method. This time it's um, a selection chamber that is made of um, a small cavity here. And there is a filter, which is a polycarbonate porous membrane where the, the size of the pores are controlled, okay? And the spermatozoa can go through these pores to uh, an IVF media just right here. And they claim that in 30 minutes, you can harvest a very good quality spermatozoa without uh, DNA fragmentation and with low rates of uh, rust generation. But we have not a lot of RCTs for this, um, for this particular device. So I would advise caution for the moment. And uh, I would advise caution because the material that is used is polycarbonate and polycarbonate is well known to, um, to be uh, bisphenol A. So it's an endocrine disruptor, bisphenol A um, productor. So we need to be uh, cautious and we need better acidity to uh, validate this method. So I want now to discuss this small, uh, these studies, this small number of studies. First of all, I want to say that there is a lack of consensus regarding a gold standard for sperm selection, but what we can say from all the studies that have been made uh, till now is that avoiding centrifugation improves spermatozoa, spermatozoa quality, just like DNA condensation, uh, DNA fragmentation, morphology, motility, rust generation, mitochondrial membrane pot potential. And sometimes, sometimes it can improve clinical outcomes, not always. But what is certain is that avoiding centrifugation reduces the burden of sperm selection and also the associated risk mismatch, for example. So it's very cost effective if the device is not too, uh, uh, too expensive. 
And the main thing is that it's a dramatic improvement of workflow in the lab. Please, uh, one minute. Please. <laughs> the last slide. <laughs> Sorry, I told you 10 minutes. So apparently, better quality, um, apparently better quality spent doesn't necessar necessarily mean that we'll you will have better clinical outcome. However, we can say that there is a possible impact of conceptus health. So we need uh, large sibling studies with all site sibling studies comparing these different techniques. And we need also a long-term follow-up uh, of the children that have been uh, conceived through this technique. So I, I, I put the, um, the, I can, uh, the last ICANN publication, where can we stand to, uh, to protect the conceptus from, from DNA damage? Well, by using better uh, isolation of sperm with low levels of DNA damage. And I think that these techniques could uh, provide a means for us to get the best of what the men can offer us at the day of the, the, the OP. And that's it. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much, Dr. Zadie Poli Villar, for this uh, very interesting presentation.